Located in our Kentucky office on the eastern side of the USA is something quite unique and very special. It's a rare engine that we at Haltech have been using as a development and testing tool for many products over the years. We've also taken it to countless shows and events to showcase the capabilities of Haltech ECUs in an attention-grabbing package. And because it is very, very cool, it does indeed grab plenty of attention. Of course, I'm talking about our 12-cylinder V12 LS engine, made by our friends at v12ls.com. This particular engine is made up of a one-piece cast aluminium engine block, custom heads and intake manifold, and a custom race cast cam and crankshaft. Being based on Chevrolet's LS architecture, top and bottom end components like pistons, rings and rods are standard off-the-shelf items that have been fitted with only a slight overbore. And with a stroke of just over 9 centimetres, we have a beast of an engine with more displacement than even the largest factory Chev big blocks. We're talking 9.7 litres or 592 cubic inches in the old money. Naturally aspirated with a mild camshaft, this engine dynoed out at just over 520 kilowatts or 700 horsepower. That may seem like plenty of power for an engine that isn't even mounted in a vehicle, but on the other hand, is there ever too much power? That got us thinking about boost. What if we added a couple of turbos? And then, what if we added more than just a couple? This should be fun. Enter Garrett. The good guys at Garrett shipped us over not one, two or even three, but four GT3582R turbochargers. At first glance, these turbos might seem a bit small compared to the engine size. Something to keep in mind, however, each exhaust manifold is divorced from the others, so each turbo only handles the exhaust flow of three cylinders, or roughly two and a half litres of engine displacement. This makes the GT3582R a perfect match for this project, right in the sweet spot of compressor efficiency for this particular model. And it also helps that they're offered in a mirrored reverse rotation version, for symmetry's sake, of course. So, we had all the boost sorted, but all the boost is not good for your V12 LS if you can't control it. A quick phone call to our Aussie mates at TurboSmart had us feeling a lot more confident that we weren't going to blow the thing up. We have four TurboSmart Gen V Compgate 40mm wastegates, one for each turbo, ensuring that the boost pressure stays exactly where we want it, which at the moment is just gate pressure, about 7 psi. Additionally, two Gen V Raceport 50mm blower valves are mounted to the inlets of the intercooler. Besides keeping compressor surge and off-throttle boost spikes from wrecking things, the blower valves are essential in producing the choo-choo whoosh noises that we all know and love. Now, to connect it all together, the bulk of the work on this upgrade involved mounting, piping and plumbing the new Garrett turbos along with their TurboSmart boost control accessories. Our in-house fabricator Andrew burned through many tanks of argon piecing together an elaborate maze of aluminium, stainless steel and titanium tubing, all of which was supplied by Vibrant Performance. The Vibrant team also provided us with the colour-coded AN hose and fittings needed to feel oil to those four turbos. Andrew rates them as a top quality product that are an absolute joy to weld on and work with. However, before we let Andrew run wild with the welder, we had to lay down a few rules. The first and foremost of those was to remember that this V12 LS is a display engine that we take to events all over the USA, which meant the whole thing, including turbos and engine stand, had to fit through a standard doorway. To meet this challenge, we partnered with local engineering firm Paco Motorsports, and using turbo mounts from Maven Performance, we came up with a pretty clever bracket mount system that hovers just above the valve covers and doubles as a heat shield for the vital fuel rails, injectors and engine harness bits that live just inches from the turbos. Because with turbos, heat management is always a concern. And when you have four of them in such a compact package, it becomes even more crucial not only to shield the vital bits of engine, but also prevent potential, let's say, thermal injury to bystanders. To combat this, we've used Shield's Thermal Management System, 
which starts with a mixture of fiberglass matting before a stainless shell is micro-welded to the exhaust manifolds with millimetre precision. It does a fantastic job of bringing the sexy kind of hotness to the outside of the engine, while keeping the actual burny ouchy hotness on the inside. While the heat should stay on the inside, there are certain things that should stay on the outside. Foreign objects, like human fingers, can cause considerable damage to turbochargers. And, to be fair, spinning turbos aren't really a great place for human fingers either. That's why each turbo is fitted with a custom powder-coated turbo guard screen to protect them from fingers. With all the mechanicals in place, the only piece of the puzzle left was to kit it out with an electronic brain. And the perfect brain for this machine is the new Haltec Nexus R5. The Nexus is an ECU PDM hybrid, which means it can control most vehicle functions from one single unit. That's why we're calling it a Vehicle Control Unit, or VCU for short. With 18 high current injector drivers and 12 ignition drivers, and connected to the engine via a brand new bespoke engine harness, the R5 easily runs the V12 LS with cylinder sequential fueling and direct fire ignition to all 12 pots. Breathing life into the big girl was the job of our in-house tuning gurus at Haltech's Kentucky office. This quad-turbo monster of an engine is the ideal vessel to showcase all the Nexus R5's built-in features including, but not limited to, dual wideband controllers, wireless communications and data logging capabilities. OK, OK, I hear you. Shut up and show us how it sounds already. OK, here it is. Nice, right? We haven't dyno tested this new combination yet, but with 9.7 litres or 592 cubic inches and 7 psi boost, tell us your best power guess in the comments below. And while you're at it, let us know what vehicle you think we should drop it in. <laughs>